I love a challenge. So when Caterham asked me if I wanted to try out their 170S for the week, I said yes and thought I'd figure it out later. For context, I've never driven a Caterham before. So if you're looking to get a Caterham 170S, or you're wondering what the verdict of a rookie Caterham driver is, keep watching, you're in the right place. This is the Caterham 170S, which of Caterham's seven models is their smallest, lightest production car yet. But don't be fooled by its quirky exterior and cute looks. It's a hoot and a handful. While technically it is a new car, it looks and drives like a car of the past. Yep, it's got no ABS, no airbags, no power steering, no traction control, and the best bit, no lane assist, thank God. It weighs just under 470 kg, it's got a 660cc Suzuki engine, which gives you 84 horsepower, and will do zero to 60 in 6.9 seconds. It stays true to Colin Chapman's motto, simplify, then add lightness. Colin Chapman is the founder of British car manufacturer Lotus, who back in the 1950s, used to make kit cars, just like this. Initially, the cars were built for racing, but in 1957, the Lotus 7 was born, created by Chapman to be a formula car for the road. In the 1960s, Caterham cars became a Lotus dealer, and by 1973, Caterham were the only British dealer left selling the Lotus 7s. It was that year that Chapman sold Caterham the rights to produce and develop the 7. And that is how we have the Caterham 7. And Caterham still sell their cars in kit form. You can get the 170S in kit form for just under 25 grand. Or you can pay £2,600 for Caterham to build it for you. I know which one I'd pick. The 170 has got two trim levels to choose from. You've got the S, which is built for the road, and the R, which is built for racing. This particular model is the S. Compared with the R, the S gives you road suspension, 14-inch silver alloys, a full windscreen, hood and side screens. You'll also get a heater and leather seats. For an extra thousand pounds, you can get the R, which has got none of these creature comforts. Instead, you'll get a sport suspension, a limited slip diff, composite race seats, race harness, and a carbon fibre dash. Which would you pick out of the two? If you want an S with more of a racing feel, or an R with more of the luxuries, you can do that too. There's plenty of options to choose from. Like this one, for example. It's got over 6,000 pounds worth of extras, including this roof, which isn't standard. It's part of their full weather pack, which will cost you 650 pounds. But living in England, you're going to need it, especially if you're from up north, like me. The roof clips on using these poppers, and you can easily stow it away in the boot when you're not using it. The boot isn't huge, but it's big enough to pop a handbag in, a rucksack, and a bit of shopping. The painted seven grill is an extra two. It can easily add up adding on all these extras, but they made the car look so good. I mean, you've got to admit the way this car is spec looks wonderful. Let me show you inside. The 170 chassis, as you can see, is pretty narrow. I'm five foot four and quite flexible. So it's relatively easy for me to get in and out, even with the roof on. I can also sit comfortably with the passenger next to me. But if you're tall, you may struggle to get in with the roof on. And you may also find it a bit of a squeeze if you're driving with a passenger with you. So just something to bear in mind. While being short is a benefit for driving the 170, the seeing position is not ideal without a bit of modification. Because you are really laid back. <laughs> I can't see very much. But that's nothing a pillow won't sort. The pedals are really close together, which is why I'm wearing these hideous trainers. You'll need a pair of race shoes or thin-soled shoes to drive the 170 but it's all part of the fun. Usually you get a black leather interior and a plain black dash in the S-Spec 170. But this one has got all the bells and whistles, like this black leather dash, these upgraded tan leather seats with contrast diamond stitching and matching armrests. That's yours for an extra 1,500 pounds. This Momo steering wheel is something that you get as standard. Momo stands for Moretti Monza, who were the steering wheel maker of choice back in the 60s for Ferrari Formula One cars. Very cool. This steering wheel's got the upgraded quick release, which will cost you £150, but it means it's easier to get in and out of the car. It also means that you've got a bit of added security too, so I'd highly recommend you getting that. How? Well, you just take it with you. You get an immobiliser too, and that's about as far as security goes. 
So where's the infotainment system and your sat-nav? Well, that's the beauty of it. There is none. You've got your hazard lights, your fog lights, your heater. You've got your windscreen wipers, screen wash, indicators, lights, and horn. You get this five-speed gearbox and a manual handbrake. There's no radio either. So you can either sing to yourself, la 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 la, or not. It's better to listen to the whoosh of the turbo whilst you're driving. There's no better sound. Because this car is about the drive more than anything else. Turn the key, wait for the light to go off, press this button and we're off. When I first drove the 170, I've got to be honest, it was quite a learning experience because the clutch bite is very high compared to a modern car. And you really do drive it with the clutch. You don't have any of these things to help you either. Five speed manual gearbox and the gears are really quite short. Sometimes when you're shifting into second, because that, I mean, second is really tight. You find that you can't get in there. So sometimes I've had to use two hands just to get into second gear. But I guess it's all part of the fun. Now, two things that really surprised me about this car are the handling and the suspension. So even though it's got no power steering, the steering wheel's not as hard as you think to move around. And it's actually really easy to maneuver the car. It's actually quite agile. It's very easy to reverse, get around corners. Honestly, corners are lovely, which is quite a surprise. You'd think in a car this low, that's so mechanical, the suspension might not be great, but the S has got road suspension. And to be honest, it can take potholes better than some modern cars. The only nemesis that the suspension has, and it's not really anything to do with the suspension, it's more to do with the, how low the car is. But if you're going over one of those bumps, you know, the single humps, they just grind the bottom of the car. You've got to angle the car so that it kind of lifts in the air whilst it goes over the bump. I mean, there's no worse sound, I think, driving one of these and hearing that. It's horrible. Now, I would say that this car definitely feels better at this kind of speed. It's going 50. 50, 60 is probably where it's happiest, in my opinion. If the road's quite bumpy, it can get a bit bouncy. The more you drive the car, the more you get used to the, what the limit is and what the car wants. So I can tell, as you should be able to with any car, really, when you get to know it, when it needs a gear change. And you're going to have to change the gears quite often to give it that oomph but also to hear that rewarding whoosh sound every time you shift. Just sounds great. So should you get one? And what's my verdict as a rookie Caterham driver? Well, if you want a fun weekend car to drive locally, the 170S is gonna give you a sense of occasion and a smile, but without scaring the hell out of you. Just make sure that you can fit in it. For me, it's one of the most rewarding cars I've ever driven and the drive is addictive. There's no distractions. There's no car play, no sat nav, no radio. It's just pure driving. And once it's got your trust, you just want to be out in it all the time. Consider this rookie a Caterham convert. So what do you think to the Caterham 170S? Let me know in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more amazing car content, if I do say so myself.